today we're going to learn a little bit about the upbeat or the pickup beat in music. You're probably very familiar with the sound of a pickup beat, but it's probably a new word for you. So I'm going to give you a couple examples of some different songs that use pickup beats. And I want you to tell me whether or not they sound like they start on a strong beat or a weak beat. So I'm going to give you a few different examples of songs that do and don't have a pickup beat and I want you to see if you can figure out which category they fall into. Here is our first example of a song. Ode to Joy. Did that sound like it started on a strong beat? Or did it sound more like the strong beat came after the first note? Try clapping it to see. Da, 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 da. I would say the first note is probably a strong beat. So we're going to label this one S for strong. Here's another example. Pretty famous melody. Happy birthday. Probably one of the most famous melodies there is. And let's listen to it again. Happy birthday to you. And try clapping it. Happy birthday. I would say that one sounds like birthday. Like birth is the strong beat and happy is more weak. So this one starts on a weak beat. Let's try another one. strong beat but right at the very beginning first note is strong all right a couple more starts on a week. Okay, so why did I call that an upbeat or a pickup beat earlier? Why didn't I just call it a weak beat? Well, it's a musical uh, theory issue, and that's why we have to call it a pickup beat, which I'm going to show you in just a second here. By the way, one thing you might have noticed is that usually work, um, songs that start with the important word usually start with a strong beat, and if they start with like the or o, oh, they're more likely to start with a weak beat because we emphasize the important words in our lyrics. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold the music up to the camera here so that you can see it. And notice how it starts with an incomplete measure. Now, I'm sorry that that's not really very well focused. Let's try focusing that. No, that's a little bit better. That's rather dark. Notice that we're in 4-4 time, but this first measure only has one beat in it. Why is that? Well, because in 4-4 time, our first beat of the measure always has to be strong. In fact, in every time signature, the first beat of the measure is strong. So in 4-4 time, it, the pattern of strong and weak beats always goes strong, weak, medium, weak. Strong, weak. Strong, weak, medium, weak, and you can kind of tell that even from the conductor's baton, they always go down on the strong in 4-4 time. That's how instrumentalists, when they're in a band or an orchestra, will be able to follow along because they always know where the strong or the down beat is. The feeling of falling towards gravity, you might say, down, down, and that's how you feel it in groups of four. And that's really what defines 4-4 time signature is that feeling of the down beat on the first beat of every four. So 
I'm just going to write a few more in here. Strong, weak, medium, weak. Strong, weak, medium. Oops. Apparently I'm switching my M's and W's. Don't do that. Strong, weak, medium, weak. So we could continue to do that for the entire song, but I'm not going to bother. But I am going to do it at the end here. So notice the end. Ah, how many beats do we have here? Strong, weak. We only have three. We're missing the fourth beat. We're missing the last weak beat, in fact. What happened was that weak beat was stolen from the end and dropped off at the beginning because we have to start on a weak beat. That's why we have an incomplete measure because the first beat of a measure always has to be strong. So we have to steal the ending from another measure in order to start on a weak beat. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Um, the reason we call it a pickup beat is, well, this isn't the reason, but I like to think of it as a, a good memory trick is that you could imagine a pickup truck coming to the end of the song and stealing that last beat and driving it up to the front and dropping it off at the beginning. <laughs> so you can think of it as the pickup beat because there's a pickup truck that dropped it off. Um, it's also called an anacrusis, um, a term I don't like just because it sounds so complicated, and an upbeat. Just because if we talked about the strong beat being the downbeat, then the, weak, the beat right before it is the upbeat. Again, that comes from conducting strong, weak, medium, weak. So the, the weak beat right before the strong is the upbeat. All right, so this song is defined a lot by the up to the down beats. So right here, right at the very beginning, we have it, but we also have it here, 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 here. We have it throughout the entire song pretty much. So I'm gonna play through, and I want you to follow along with your score and just pay attention to the strong and the weak beats. Okay, don't worry about hand position or rhythm at this point.
Now there's not a lot of skips in this song. Feel free to mark them. I believe there is only one. And I believe that's just at the end of line two. So if you want, you can mark that right there. But pretty much I think everything else is a step or a same. There's a lot of sames in this song. So for the most part, because the Duke is marching up a hill and then down a hill, the melody kind of follows that. It's an example of what we call word painting, where the music kind of follows the meaning of the words. So we, we slide into G, and then we stay on G for quite a while, and then we step up to A, stay on A, and then we step up to B, stay on B for a bit, and then we land up on C, which is finger four. And once we get to C, that's the top of our hill, and then we end up going back down again. And then again, similar thing, we slide into the G from finger three, stay on G, up to A, stay on A, up to B, and then up to the top of our hill, which is C, and then back to B, and then A, and then G. So that's the melody, getting rid of all of the rhythm, the steps, um, sorry, getting rid of all the rhythm and the sames, only looking at the steps, that's what the melody does. So that's a great practice strategy, is just looking for where does the note change versus where does it stay the same, and just play the same like that one note. So if it's all these are same, just play one B. And then all of these are C's, just play one C. These are two B's, just play one. And that way you're forced to really look at what stays the same and what doesn't. Now once you've done that, the last thing we need to look at is just the two note slur technique. So two note slurs always go down, up. So it's almost like you're doing a single motion on one note, like down, up on a single note. And I would practice it first on one note, and then transfer the up to the second note. Down, up, just like that. So um, those happen quite a bit in this song. Feel free to jump and find different ones. And practice them by themselves. So we have a couple three note slurs where we step down. Play the right hand for you of the whole song. 